his country stands united with France. But is the world looking to the United States to take the lead in the war on terror? Former UN Ambassador John Bolton joins us. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Glad to be with you. Well, it, uh, it certainly has hit France uh, hard today, uh, the loss of many lives. But uh, what's our role in this in terms of what should the United States be doing to try to fight this war? Well, I think first the leadership of the country has to acknowledge that we're in a war. I mean, let's just take a second and look at what happened here today. This was a military-style attack on innocent civilians in the capital city of a major Western country. This is a big, big event. And if it can happen in Paris, it can happen in Washington or New York. You can count on it. So either we come to the realization, which is everywhere around us for most people to see, that we are still engaged in a war on terrorism, or we're going to see it happen in this country sooner rather than later. Uh, and we can talk about all the different things our intelligence services and our law enforcement can do. We can talk about what Congress can do. But unless the President of the United States understands that Western civilization is under attack here and responds accordingly, we will simply see this tragedy repeated endlessly. Well, it seems to me you've got to sort of start at the beginning. And if you look at this, there's at least one report that Sharif Kouachi, who is the 34-year-old, the oldest, had some connections to Syria. He'd been in Syria at some, some time ago. So it seems to me that, you know, we really need to sort of focus sort of at the beginning of this chain. It's not enough to sort of, you know, look at it just in Paris if it's starting someplace else. Well, I think uh, it requires deciding whether uh, we are at war with terrorism or if what happened today was just a, uh, a more uh, tragic version of knocking over the local grocery store. Uh, this is not a law enforcement question. It's a war. And if you want to protect your civilian population against this kind of uh, terrorism, you have to go where the base camps of the enemy are. And they are in places like North Africa, Yemen, and ISIS in uh, Syria and Iraq, uh, none of which our administration has shown any indication of doing. And whatever the French or the British or the other Europeans think, they simply don't have the capacity without American leadership to do it effectively. So I think the spotlight is where it should be, which is on that big chair in the Oval yeah. Office. Well, you, you know, left out another big area, uh, Boko Haram in Nigeria. I mean, right. that is just explo I mean, that's another huge cancerous, uh, right. uh, uh, you know, violent uh, terrorist cell. No, exactly. I think the Middle East and North Africa generally are descending into chaos. Uh, and the United States has focused these last several years on what the administration thinks is the biggest threat to peace and security, namely Israel building apartment buildings in East Jerusalem. It's time to... Uh, wake up and acknowledge we are still at war with terrorism uh, and they're either going to kill more of us because we're not doing enough to uh, to destroy their capacity to do that uh, or, or, or we're just going to face this uh, for as far as the eye can see. That, that's why to me this is such a major event, not just the tragedy of these 12 or perhaps more people being killed, but the assault on an institution of freedom in the West uh, in a major Western city. So it's for all of us to wake up, but particularly the United States. We are the only ones who can lead this. Ambassador, thank you, sir.